Okay, let's start this session now. Uh, hello guys, good morning and welcome you all in this AI 050 session. Myself Archie this side, I'm a host for this session. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We'll be there to help you out. Uh, let's moving ahead and talking about our event sponsor that is Synergetics. So Synergetics is in India one of kind co-porting learning solution company. Now you will get a question like who we are and what we're doing. So answering your question. We boost our offering and also give comprehensive advisory service to client who wish to modernize their framework. We educate, advise, implement and manage. Then the synergetic solution offering that is persona based onboarding solution. Persona based onboarding solution, onboarding add on solution, certification solution, certification add on solution, reskilling solution. Imagine technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales and pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. What does Microsoft certification do? does? It will give you complete learning experience. You will get trained to appear for the exam and get certified. This is skilling journey. Here you can advance yourself. First, you have to complete fundamental certification. Then you can go with the advanced role based certification and expert level certification. In fundamental certification, we have AJ 900, AI 900, DP 900, PL 900, and SC 900. In associate level certification, we are, we have many times of, many types of certification. Here you can see on my screen. Then expert level certification, we are providing you AZ305, SC100, PL600, and AZ400. Also, we have special certification that is AZ120, AZ140, AZ220. If you want any certification, uh, you can connect with us. Then certification offering. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skills. We do provide certification add-on, onboarding add-on like short duration modules and more. Then moving ahead, today training is organized and handled by the ATC community. So our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in our cloud technology and various emerging technology. Under ATC community, we have emerging technology community for all. Then Azure Tech community for Pune Kurs. Emerging technology community for Surat Kurs. Azure Tech community for Nagpur Kurs. Guys, you just, you guys, guys, you just have to install the Meetup app and you can follow our communities there. Then you have to follow code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment for all the participants. Please note that participants are not allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. We will try to upload this training on our official YouTube channel. Today's speaker for this training is Sonu Satyadas. He is an assistant manager technology and currently work with Synergetics. Agenda for this webinar, you will get to know more about the topic and benefit of it. In this session, we are providing you complimentary learning achievement badge. You just have to uh, follow the step and you will get the activated badge. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube for upcoming webinars details. Thank you. Now I would like to hand over this mic. Our speaker, he will continue ahead. Thank you, Archie. Hello, everyone. I hope I am audible to all of you. I request all of you to be on mute. And uh, you, if you have any questions, you can put your questions in the chat. And at the end, we will have a question answer session and I will be answering all of your questions at the end of the session. So myself, uh, Sonu, and uh, I am Assistant Manager Technology at Synergetics. And uh, today we are 
here to understand the AI 050, that is the generative AI solutions using Azure Open AI. In this course, we have specifically six modules. If you see the first module is getting started with the Azure Open AI service. Second module is building natural language solutions using Gen AI. After that, we will continue with the prompt engineering techniques. And followed that, we will uh, understand how the code generation techniques works with generative AI. And finally, we will end up the session with generating the images and the custom data for a RAG approach. So that's the session agenda. Okay, so let's start with the first module. Okay, just give me a minute. So the first module in this course will be get started with Azure Open AI service. In this, we will understand what is Gen AI, how to provision an Azure Open AI resource, how to deploy a model, and finally, we will understand how to use the Azure Open AI Studio. To start with the generative AI, we know the, the one of the trending technology nowadays is artificial intelligence. It is not a new technology. It is the, the word artificial intelligence is introduced in 1950s and the systems like the expert systems, decision-making solutions. They were initially called as artificial intelligence systems. But with the introduction of machine learning in 1990s, artificial intelligence got a boost and people started using the artificial intelligence using this machine learning models. These machine learning models use millions and millions of data for training. So during the training, the models will understand the patterns in the data. And this learned knowledge can be used to make predictions, or it can be used to take decisions. For example, a weather forecasting model can predict the temperature based on some parameters. Because the model is already trained with millions of data, which will be the historic data where we will be training the model with different parameters like uh, humidity, date, time, or the wind direction, okay, the uh, sunset, sunrise, all these parameters we will be 
considering and we will also provide the temperature for that particular date. So the training data will contain a large set of parameters and a labeled output. The model is understanding the relationship between the parameters and the label and learn the patterns. Once the training is completed, we can use the trained model to make predictions. During this time, we will be providing only the parameters and the model will predict the temperature. So such machine learning models became very popular and we started using these models in various domains. But the problem with these models was they, these models were used only for a specific process or specific task because these models are simply using some mathematical and statistical operations to do the predictions. But when we need to analyze very complex data such as images, videos, audios, such simple machine learning models were not sufficient because if I have to analyze an image, we have to understand what are the different objects we can identify from the image. We have to create a caption about the image. We have to detect the human faces from the image. Or in case of uh, audio, we have to understand the audio which is coming from a microphone, detect the languages, convert that into text. If required, we have to translate that into a different language. So such complex operations we cannot do using the simple machine learning models. For that, we have deep learning. So deep learning introduced in 2010s and there are different deep learning models which uses deep learning neural networks to process the data and give the result. These neural networks, similar to the human brain's neurons, which can process the data at various levels and generate the results. But again, these models, whether it is a machine learning models or deep learning models, user will be providing a set of data and the model is analyzing the data and then generating the result. But in 2021, generative AI models has been introduced and these generative AI models are capable to generate some new fresh data based on the instructions given by the user, which means as a user, you don't need to supply any data to the model. You just need to give an instruction to the model what kind of data you want to get as a result. For example, I can tell the model, can you write a story for me? Or can you create a blog for me? Or can you create uh, uh, a test data set that is having thousands of records? Or you can tell the model, can you draw an image? So you can tell the model to do something and the model is capable to generate some new content and give it to you. Such models are called a generative AI models because they are capable to generate some new fresh contents. So these generative AI models 
or generative AI is the new member in the artificial intelligence ecosystem. And in this course, we will learn the open AI's generative AI models. So what is open AI? Open AI is an American research laboratory. They focus on building artificial intelligence models. And they want to use these models for the benefits of humans. And they have created different types of generative AI models. A model can generate the text, model can generate the image, a model can process the, uh, the audio. Like this, they have created different types of generative AI models. If you want to consume or if you want to use these models, you can subscribe to these models directly from the OpenAI website. But the problem with the OpenAI models, when you consume it directly from the OpenAI uh, server or OpenAI website is, since you are making a subscription, obviously you have to pay for it and you your applications needs to make a request to consume that models. Maybe your application will be running in a cloud environment like Azure. But your open AI models are deployed in an external network or external environment. So you have to make the request from your application to a public network. Obviously, your request needs to travel from your cloud environment to the OpenAI servers. That means you have to expose your application to the public. Or there should you have to open a port to communicate to the external API. Another thing, or another problem was the open AI servers are deployed in remote locations, usually in US or some other locations. But if your customer is located in India, when you make a request from your application, the request needs to travel from India to the US servers. I'm not sure about the location of the uh, open AI servers, but it's in a uh, different location. So your request from the customer machines needs to travel to that open AI servers. So there can be a latency. And also, these models will be uh, deployed in the, the, the servers maintained by open AI. So the scalability, high availability, all will be taken care of by the open AI. You don't have any control over the scalability, high availability, or any other uh, configuration parameters. And even if you want to monitor the usage of the services, like how many requests has been successfully processed, how many requests failed, you don't have access to the complete information about the request made by the user. So Microsoft has come up with a solution because Microsoft is now partnered with OpenAI or Microsoft is funding for OpenAI. So they have come up with the solution that a Microsoft Azure user can deploy these OpenAI models in, inside the cloud environment. Means if you 
have an Azure subscription, you can deploy the open AI models, that is generative AI models, within your subscription that also in a desired location. So you can decide, okay, I want to deploy my gen AI models in, in, in India location, or I want to deploy my gen AI models in a UK location, or I want to deploy my models in a uh, 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 Australia location. So that means the user can deploy these open AI models in his preferred location. That's a benefit. Secondly, since we are deploying these models inside the cloud environment, inside the Azure environment, your cloud applications can securely connect to these open AI models through this uh, internal network. That means there is no need to expose any public endpoint or uh, public connectivity, public network connectivity is not required. Also, you can monitor the usage of these open AI resources. So the benefit of deploying the open AI services or open AI models inside the Azure environment is, first of all, you can choose your preferred location. You can deploy this within the network so that you can securely connect from your applications to the open AI models. And also you will have access to the monitoring parameters. But one point I have to tell you in, in at this time, open AI service is not available to all the subscriptions by default. Suppose if I have an Azure subscription, I will not have the open AI enabled inside it. If you want to use open AI, you have to make a request to Microsoft for enabling the open AI within your subscription. So you can go to HTTPS colon double slash aka.ms slash OAI apply URL. This will give you a form like the Google form kind of uh, uh, request form will be there. You can provide the information such as your name, subscriptions, uh, ID, and uh, the use case, all informations you have to fill. And the request will be considered within 24 hours or max to 48 hours. And if the request is valid, it will be approved. Make sure that you are not applying with your personal uh, IDs, like a Hotmail, Gmail kind of IDs cannot be used for the subscriptions. So if it is an official organization based subscriptions, it will be enabled within your subscription. Once the open AI is enabled, you can deploy these open AI models in your favorite location. But understand, still I, there is a disclaimer that all the models provided by open AI is not available in all the regions. For example, OpenAI is providing different models like uh, GPT, DAL-E, Whisper, Embeddings, TTS. So there are different, different models available, but all these models and all these model versions are not available in every location. So before start deploying, you have to verify in the documentation which model you are expecting to use, whether that model is available in the location that you choose. If the model is not available in that location, you need to 
change the location. Okay. You can deploy your open AI services either by using a command line interface or CLI, or you can use the web portal. If you are using the CLI, you can use the Azure CLI command like AZ Cognitive Services account create for creating the uh, open AI account. So you need to specify the SKU, that is the pricing, then subscription ID, resource group, name of the resource, location, all parameters you have to pass. And this will be creating an open AI account. And once you go inside the open AI account, you are allowed to deploy the models that you wish. Suppose if I have to deploy GPT models, I can do that. If you wish to deploy uh, a DALI model, you can do that. Or if you wish to deploy a Whisper model, you can do that. So according to uh, your requirement, you can deploy any models within one account. Means if you create a single open AI resource, within that you can deploy multiple models. The Azure Open AI Studio is a web user interface provided by Microsoft Azure to work with this Open AI models. This web user interface helps you to deploy the models in that selected location. You can test these models using some playgrounds like a chat playgrounds, DAL E playground, completions playground. You will be able to uh, configure the custom data within this open AI studio. Even you can do the fine tuning of models and configuring the content filters for moderation that also you can do using the open AI studio. What are the different uh, models we have in uh, uh, the, the Azure Open AI service? Because I said Azure Open AI allow you to use the same open or allow you to deploy the same open AI models in the Azure cloud environment. So whatever open AI models we have in the general open AI website, the same models you can also deploy in the Azure Open AI. But yes, obviously the facilities and features may be vary according to the model. Maybe some features may not be present in the Azure Open AI. For example, in DAL E model. The Azure Open AI's DALI model only allow the image creation, no image, no image editing and the variations creation. But in the general Open AI's DALI model, allow you to create the image, edit the image, and also create the variations of the image. So there will be some features differences. And uh, going forward, they will be enabling all the features within Azure Open AI. So before start using these models, you need to verify the features and functionalities provided by each model within the Azure Open AI environment. If you look at the model family, we have GPT-4 which is the latest 
generative pre-trained transformer models. If you see the OpenAI has recently released GPT-4 uh, O model, that is Omni model, and GPT-4 O mini model. So GPT-4 is a multi-model model. What is multi-model model? So compared to the GPT-3.5, which is a text-only model, which means it can accept only the text kind of input or text instructions from the user, and it can also produce text responses. That's why it is called a text-only model. So GPT-3.5 is using a context size of maximum 16K, and it is a text-only model. But GPT-4 is large in context. That means 128K uh, context size it provides. And also, it is a multi-model model, which means you will be able to provide the input in the form of image and text. For example, if you want, you can upload an image and you can ask, can you describe this image? Or you can upload an image and then ask the model, can you create a story about this image? Okay, so that means GPT-4 allow you to provide the image and the text as inputs, but the output is always a text data. And I said this is providing a context size of 128K, which means when you make a request, your prompt size can go maximum 128K tokens. A token simply means the number of words. So words I cannot say because if it is a very large word, then it will be divided into multiple tokens. But usually a token means four to five characters maximum. So simply a one word can be considered as one token. So it supports 128K tokens, means 128,000 uh, tokens inside uh, the request. So you will be able to make, or you will be able to provide a large context data as an input to the model. But in case of GPT 3.5, the maximum context size is 16K, that is 16,000. And uh, it can provide only the text inputs. But if you compare the speed, GPT 3.5 is much faster compared to the GPT 4 turbo models. So people are still using GPT 3.5 for faster uh, responses. But if you if they want more accuracy, and capability, they will use the GPT-4 model. But another disadvantage of GPT-4 is even though it is large in context size and uh, large, uh, sorry, uh, providing greater accuracy, the disadvantage is it is very costly. So the amount uh, that is charged for 1 million tokens is very, very high in uh, GPT-4 models. So they have introduced a lightweight version of this recently, that is GPT-4 O, and it's a light, lightweight version, that is GPT-4 O Mini, which is very cheaper compared to GPT-4 Turbo. So you can look at the open AI's uh, newsletters to know more about the models and its pricing and capabilities. But yes, here you need to understand GPT-4 is a multi-model model, 
and it is providing greater accuracy uh, in generating responses compared to the GPT 3.5. Okay. An embeddings model is another type of model which is used to convert your text data into numeric representations. So when you implement custom data with models like the RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generations, you need to provide the data in the form of numbers because the Gen AI models are not dealing with the text data directly. Instead, it is handling the numeric representation of the data. That means your data will be placed in, in a multi-dimensional vector and that vector uh, representation of the data is used for similarity search. Means whenever you search for a relevant data, it uses this vector information. So to create this vector in, uh, information or to create this vector data, that is numeric representation of the text data, you have to use the embeddings model. And dial E, which is which is an image generation model. This image generation model is available in two versions, dial E2 and dial E3. Compared to the dial E2, dial E3 is providing greater uh, accuracy and uh, greater output because it can generate the images in various styles. Okay, realistic cartoon images, Picasso style images, vivid style. Okay, so there are different, different styles of Im uh, images it can generate. So uh, now people use us DAL E3. And you can also see the Microsoft Copilot, which is integrated in Windows or uh, uh, Bing brow browser or in your uh, sorry Bing application or the the Edge browser, all are using the DAL E for the image generations. If you go to the Edge browser, you can see there is Copilot, and you can ask the Copilot to generate something and you can see it uh, provides image uh, as an input or you can even provide a text data. Okay. So you can ask the model to generate an image. I'm just giving a prompt, means a text. Let's see whether this model uh, is generating it. So this is now using the DAL E for creating this image. Even if you go to the Bing, here also you will be able to see the same. <clears throat> See, this is Copilot. Here also you can provide your form. So this is the uh, Copilot, which is part of the Bing application, and this is Copilot agent, which is part of your browser. Both can do the same. And you can see it is generating four variations of the image. Okay, so based on my uh, prompt, it is generated an image. So this is a cartoon style image, but if you want, you can tell the model to uh, uh, create a realistic image, then it will be creating a realistic image. Okay, so anyway, inside this co-pilot, it is using multiple models for image generation, it is using the DAL-E model.
deploying gen ai models as i have mentioned once you create an open ai resource you can go to the open ai studio and then start deploying your models so which is the generative ai model you want it can be gpt4 gpt3.5 dal e whisper tts embeddings or any other model you can deploy directly using the open ai studio if you don't want to use open ai studio you can still do that using the azure cli command okay you can use the az cognitive services account deployment create command to deploy a new model within the open ai resource you can deploy a gpt model which is one of the widely used open ai model for natural language processing and you can do various operations with this gpt model it can be gpt 3.5 or gpt 4 so some of the use cases described here first of all classifying the content so you must have uh, seen the applications like a flipkart or book my show there we have an option it means as a customer we have an option to provide the product review or movie reviews and also a rating option but we can analyze the feedback of the user and then we can increase or decrease the rating for the movie or product for example if the customer is giving a positive feedback the rating of the product will increase if the customer is giving a negative feedback then the rating will decrease but for increasing and decreasing the rating first we have to understand whether the given comment is a positive comment or negative comment or a neutral comment so if it is a positive comment we can increase the rating if it is a negative comment we can decrease the rating so the first thing we have to do is to analyze the feedback and classify it as positive or negative so we have to identify the sentiment of that feedback if it is positive then we have to increase the rating if it is negative we have to decrease the rating so that's why we do the classification of uh, user reviews by i mean into two categories like positive or negative the next thing we can do is generating the new content so if you are a uh, uh, blogger or you are continuously writing articles for on various technologies you can use gen ai to write the articles for you you can just go to the model and say okay uh, write an article or write a blog on this particular technology it will give you a article or a blog on that particular technology or you can tell the model to write a story or poem you can give a theme you can specify okay i want to create a story of a king and a farmer or i want to create a story of uh, the lion and the elephant so it will start creating a story for you transformation or translation 
another important feature that we use mostly in the chatbots is translation because suppose if the user is conversing in a different language which is not in english we can tell the model to detect the language and translate that into english for processing for example if the customer is conversing in french or german you can tell the model to detect the language and convert that text into english and then do a search in the backend data or you can process that request summarization is another task we can do with the models means we may have a very very lengthy uh, text maybe multiple paragraphs of text we have but if i want to summarize that we can tell the model to summarize that in a few statements for example the product description is maybe a one lengthy paragraph or maybe a, a page but we can tell the model summarize the product description in just a two or three sentences so that we can show the summarized description inside the website so we may not have space for showing the complete uh, summary of the product so what we can do show the uh, summarized description inside the website continuation is another task so when you ask the model to complete a statement or complete the text model will do that for you for example you can tell the model once upon a time there was a king if you provide this as an input the model will understand from this that you are trying to tell a story and it will complete that story okay so this feature is mostly used in productivity productivity tools like a uh, github copilot or uh, aws uh, q or code whisperer tab 9 kind of code editors because if you are a developer you can just uh, start writing the first line or maybe the name of the uh, function and it will complete the remaining function so i can show you an example here let me create a python file so this is the python file i can create a python function def okay uh, binary sort and then i'm pressing brackets you can see i have just typed only two words def and binary sort and the ai model is giving the suggestion okay because binary sort it is understanding okay binary sort is a function because def is used for defining a function and the name of the function is binary sorting that means the developer wants to write the code for binary sorting and it is giving the suggestion for that you can see i have to just press the tab to complete that so it will give that same i can do in case of other languages like javascript so here i can write function is palindrome see when i type the function keyword and the function name from that the model is understanding what to complete okay for completing this what i have to do so it is generating the remaining things i have to just press tab so this is the completions or continuations process where i have to just type only the first few uh, uh, words or first few characters remaining it will 
right? Even in case of comment generation. So suppose here I'm saying I'm putting a comment. Okay, so when I put the comment and say um, function two, see when I type function two, then remaining it will assume and generate continuation of this text. It is automatically doing like continue uh, function to check if a string is palindrome or not. So that means as a developer, you don't need to go and write the complete code. Only the starting point you write from the context, I mean from the file name, from the uh, function name, from the language, it is understanding what to do next and it is generating that. Right. So this is an example of continuation. Question answering. So question answering is a simple uh, process uh, mostly done by any model like uh, any text based model or natural language model. You can ask the model about any question. If it is a part of the trained data, it will be able to answer it. For example, we can ask the model about the distance between Earth and the Sun, or you can ask who is the president of USA. All these kind of questions we can ask, even though the model is not able to give you the real time data. But at the time of training the model, what was the data present? It can give the answers based on that data. Next is chat. That means you can configure the behavior of your chat assistant and you can converse with the chat assistant. You can simply ask the questions using text, using that is chat prompt and uh, the, the chat assistant will use generative AI to generate the answers for you. So that is, these are some of the use cases for uh, generative AI, that is G G GPT models. So along with that, you, you can also work with the images and audio, but that is not mentioned. These all natural language text processing scenarios. Here you can see how we can try the open AI studio for testing our models. So suppose if you have done the models or uh, model deployment, you can try the models, whether the model is uh, giving the responses as expected. So you can try without writing an application. So there is no need to write a complete application code to test this directly from the chat playground or completions playground, you will be able to test this. I'll show you how to do that. So this is the end of the first module. And if you go to the Azure portal, you can deploy a new Open AI resource. <clears throat> so this is my Azure account. I can deploy a new Open AI resource just going to create a resource, search for open AI. And here you will be able to see the open AI, right? So you can go and deploy this, create, you can specify the resource group where you want to deploy. You can specify the region where you want to deploy. You can see various locations available. 
So according to the location, the features and availability of models will change. And uh, you can specify the name of the resource. Maybe I can say my open AI. Some random numbers we can specify. So like this, we can specify the name, the region, and the pricing tier. Next, here we can configure the network. Suppose if you want to deploy the model or deploy the open AI resource within a network that allows private access to that resource uh, from your applications, then you can choose the network configuration. So by default, it is accessible from all the networks. That means public access is allowed. And here you can specify the tags if required, and you can go and deploy this. So I'm not deploying this because I already have deployed one instance. Okay. I'll show you where it is. Once the deployment is completed, you will get a resource like this. So this is my open AI resource. When you deploy this open AI resource, you will get a key and endpoint. So this key is used for authentication and the endpoint is used for making the request. So this service is accessible from uh, or using this endpoint. And you can see this is deployed in the Sweden central location. In the overview page, you can see at the top there is uh, go to Azure Open AI Studio option. When I click on that, it is going to open the Open AI Studio. I think the new environment is coming. Okay, so this is the new look and feel for the Open AI Studio. This is the new look and feel. If I want to switch to the old look, you can go to this. So from here, you can see the model catalog, which shows the available list of models. You can see these are the different uh, models available, like a GPT 4O Mini, GPT 4O, GPT 4 Whisper. That is speech recognition model, TTS, text -to, to speech. Okay, then text embeddings model. And we have DAL E, which is text -to, to image model, GPT 3, uh, 35 Turbo Instruct. Okay, so DaVinci. So this is the completions model. So if you see, there are different uh, models available. And you can uh, do the deployment here under this section. You can see the deployments. I have already deployed a couple of models you can see. So I have a DAL E model, GPT 3516K model, GPT 35, that is 3.5 Turbo Instruct model, GPT 4 model, then GPT 16K model, then 
text embedding. So I can just delete some of them if I don't want. This I don't want. This also I don't want. This turbo instruct. So I can remove these models, uh, model deployments. Suppose if I have to do a new deployment, I can click on this deploy model, deploy a base model. So which model you want? So GPT 4.0 mini model you want to deploy, you can select that. Okay, or you want to deploy some other model. Suppose if I go to some completions model, I can select this. Okay, DaVinci 002. And then confirm. You can specify the name of the deployment. So by default, deployment name is same as the model name is coming. If you want, you can go with that or you can provide a custom name. But I'll go with that. And you can also specify the rate limiting, like uh, how many tokens per minute allowed. Okay, because if the tokens we allow is the maximum, then the cost will increase because the cost is calculated based on the number of tokens consumed. So we can, as an administrator, we can control the cost. Okay, so maximum this many tokens allowed per minute. Okay, so I have deployed this DaVinci model. If you go to the deployments, you will see it here. Okay, so I have GPT-35 model, that is GPT-3.5, DaVinci, then GPT-4 also, if you want, you can deploy. I'm going with the GPT-4 mini. So within one open AI, I can deploy multiple uh, models not available on selector. Okay, I think okay, this is, you can see this in this selected or in this resource, it is not available. So let me use GPT-4.0. Let me check whether it is available. This is also not available. Okay, anyway, GPT-4 is not available. Maybe the location is not allowing to deploy that. No worries. So we are we have the other models. If I want to try this, I can go with chat playground. See, I'm going to the chat playground where I can select my model. So which model I have to use for uh, the chat completion. So if you see, Feature wise, if you look at the models, the wherever the chat completion is mentioned, these models are supporting the chat uh, completion endpoint. And here you can see DaVinci is supporting only the completions endpoint. So there is a difference between chat completion and completion, which we'll discuss later. Okay. So currently I'm going with the chat completion since only GPT-35 is providing the chat completion. I am selecting that. And then here is the system message that uh, change the behavior of the model. So here, this is just a saying, you are an AI assistant that helps people to find information. So this is a general message. And you can ask the model about anything. Maybe I can say, how uh far is moon from earth so this question i am asking okay so you can see this is a general answer we are getting okay but i can change the behavior of the assistant by changing the system message okay 
you are an AI assistant that answers the questions in a funny way. Okay. Yeah, just I'm changing this and apply changes. And now let me ask the same question and see is there any difference in the answer. You can see same question, but the way it is answering is different. Oh, it's just a hope, a skip and a rocket ride away, approximately uh, 2,38,900 miles. Give, give or take a few moonwalks, but hey, who is counting? So that means it's a funny way it is answering. Look at that. When I change the system message, it is changing the way how it is answering. Even though it is giving the same answer, the way it is answering is different. Right. So this is the chat playground. OK, and we also have completions playground where we will be using the completions endpoint. And you can see DaVinci model is used here. So completions model, there is no system message or anything like that. We can simply ask a prompt. OK, like a once upon a time. There was a king. OK, and then I'm just asking the model to generate the remaining. Okay. So you can see it is generating the remaining statements, even though it is not able to complete. You can see okay, it's not able to complete because I have restricted with the maximum number of tokens allowed is 100. 100 tokens means 100 words only maximum allowed in the response. This if I can increase to 200 or 300 more output will come but you can see this is the story continues right once upon a time there was a king who had three sons he wanted to know which of them was the most capable and worthy of succeeding him right this is a story it creates right so this is the completions playground look at the difference the completions playground you will be providing a starting text and it is providing the answer for that or the remaining thing it is completing. That's why it is called a completions. But in chat completions or chat playground, you are asking a question or you are asking the model to do something and it will respond. And you can also configure the behavior using a system message. Okay. So these are the two types of endpoints we can use either completions or chat completions. Now coming to the second module, because the first module is just about the deployment of open AI models in Azure Cloud. After this module, I'll take your questions if there is anything in the chat. So here you can see this module is talking about building natural language solutions with a Azure Open AI service. This is quite simple because in this we are going to see how we can integrate the Open AI solutions or Open AI models within our application. As I have mentioned in the demo, we need to understand what are the different endpoints provided by the open AI models. So if you consider the uh, models that is used for natural language processing, like uh, uh, GPT models or embeddings model or the old uh, completions models, so all these models are usually used for the natural language processing. So there are primarily three endpoints provided by these uh, models 
One is completion endpoint. In this, the model is taking an input text and generate one or more predicted completions. You have seen, I have used this endpoint or I have used this completions endpoint for completing my story because I have given a text input like a once upon a time there was a king that was my input text and the model is able to predict the remaining statement that is the completions it is predicting. Embeddings means if you want your model to convert the text into numeric representations, then we will use embeddings. So this numeric representations called vector representations. OK. Suppose if you are, you are building an application that is going to use the custom data, then it's better to use which one? Embeddings, because when you work with the custom data, behind the scene, it is going to use the numeric representation of the data. So when you provide your custom data to the models, you have to convert these text data into numbers. That you will be doing using the embeddings models. Chat completion endpoint is the third one, which is similar to completion endpoint, but here the the, the input is given in the form of a chat conversation. Means when you provide a prompt or provide an input to the model, you will specify the uh, messages, which is either a system message or user message or assistant message. As I have showed before, system message is typically used to set the behavior of the model. So like how the model needs to behave like a funny character or a, a teacher or a policeman or a, a artist. So what way the model is supposed to behave so that uh, you can configure in system message. And also you can specify some instructions what the model needs to follow. Like, OK, you can tell the model the you are a helpful assistant who gives answers to the customer's questions, but do not reveal any information about the company or do not answer any questions that is uh, not related to the company products. So that kind of instructions you can provide it to the model. So model will uh, understand and uh, change its uh, behavior according to the system message. But the user message, the next role is user. A user message is the user prompt, means what is a user asking to the model is configured as user message or user prompt. And the assistant message, next role is assistant and assistant message is the response generated by the model. So if you are providing the prompt in the form of a chat conversation message, then it is called a chat completions endpoint. But if you see all the new models like a GPT 4O, GPT 4 Mini, GPT 3.5 Turbo, or uh, GPT 4 Turbo, all these new models using the chat completions endpoint and embeddings and uh, the completion endpoints are provided by the older models. If you see here is an example for the completion endpoint where you can see the user makes a request to this URL. So this will be the URL of the com uh, completion endpoint. So here you can see 
we will specify the endpoint. Endpoint means the name of the resource. Dot open AI dot Azure dot com. That is the common domain. So the, up to this is the domain slash open AI slash deployments slash name of the deployment. So you remember that deployment, every deployment will have a name like a my GPT, hello GPT uh, or uh, test GPT, any name you can give. So that name you can specify slash completions, which means you are making a request to the completions uh, endpoint. And your request will contain very simple text. That is like a, I have asked once upon a time there was a king. That's a input text. The remaining who has to fill the assistant has to fill. So here also an example you can see prompt equal to your favorite Shakespeare play is means it's not a completed one half completed uh, text. And you can also specify the maximum number of tokens. You remember the story was not completed because the maximum token was mentioned as 100. So it will uh, generate only maximum 100 uh, words in the response. But using 100 words, it is not possible to complete the story. Right. So that was it was showing incomplete story. So you can adjust the number of tokens required in the output by using the max tokens. So when you provide this request, you can see the response which is coming is as an array of choices. Array of choices. The array will contain object. That object will contain the response text. You can see. So you can see the completed output as your favorite Shakespeare play is Macbeth. But in embeddings endpoint, you can see embeddings endpoint is also using the similar format. Your resource name that is endpoint dot openai dot azure dot com slash openai slash deployment slash deployment name. So this is the embeddings deployment name slash embeddings, and then you will be providing only the text. We can pro just to provide the text input text and this text will be converted into numeric representation. You can see in the output data, the data will contains the numeric representation of your text. So embeddings inside the embeddings, you will be able to see the numeric data. But when it comes to chat completion endpoint, that is using the prompt in the form of chat messages, you can see again the URL is similar. Endpoint dot openai dot azure dot com slash open ai slash deployment slash this is the model deployment name like GPT 4.0, oh, GPT uh, 4.0 oh mini or GPT 3.5. So whatever is the name of the deployment, please understand not the model name. Deployment name means the name of the deployment that you have provided. Slash chat slash completions. And then inside your request, you will be passing an array of messages. Look at that. This is an array of messages okay. where they, you can include multiple messages and each message will have a role and a content the first message okay so this is the first message the first message is mostly the system message so what is the benefit of using system message system message is used to configure the behavior of the model you can say here system is the role and the content is you are an assistant that teaches people about ai okay so that means you you have to behave like a teacher who is teaching the ai now this is the second message 
in that where role equal to user, where, which means the user is asking something to the model. This is the second message where the user is asking, does Azure OpenAI support multiple languages? Then the assistant is supposed to give the answer. You can say role equal to assistant and assistant is giving the answer. So this is the next message, which is the response. Where you can see the assistant is replying, yes, Azure OpenAI supports several languages. Then again, the user is asking the next prompt. Look at that here. This is the final prompt or this is the actual prompt. This is the fourth message. And this is the final question or this is the actual question to the model. We can say, do other cognitive services support translation? So look at that. We are actually need to ask this question, only the last question. Then why we are including these many text? So the system message is used to set the behavior. So that is important. Okay, it is important because that is used to set the behavior of the model. Okay, and the last one, which is role equal to user and content is do other cognitive services support translation, which is the actual prompt. So this is also important. Now the question is why we have to include this these two messages inside my request. So these two messages, one is user and one is assistant, we are including in, in our request as an example. For example, whenever I ask the model to do something, model may not be aware how to answer that. So when you provide this kind of example, model will be capable to understand from the given example, okay, I am supposed to answer like this. So this role equal to assistant is provided by you only. Okay, but why you have given this? This is given as an example. Okay, you have given this as an example. So the model will understand how to answer the user's question. Okay, so actually, you are supposed to provide only two messages, this system message and the final prompt message. In between whatever uh, conversations we are including, it's only for the example purpose that we will learn in the prompt engineering technique. So now we have understood that we can use completions and point chat completion endpoint or embedding endpoint. Okay, so we have seen the REST API URLs for calling this operations. But as a developer, you may be developing your application using C Sharp, Java, Python, or Node.js, that is JavaScript. And you are not interested to make HTTP calls like this because I don't want to make HTTP calls like this. And uh, the re result is also coming in the JSON format. And this JSON result we have to convert back to class variable data. So that is very complicated process. So most of the developers, they do not want to directly use the REST APIs. Okay, instead of that, OpenAI is providing the SDK for that, the Azure OpenAI SDK for different languages available. So SDK benefit is they provide some built-in classes and functions you can directly call to make a request and get the response. See here, the Azure OpenAI package you can use by importing the azure.ai.openai namespace. So this is the .NET namespace, C-sharp language namespace for the OpenAI services. Then you create an OpenAI client class, OpenAI client, client equal to new OpenAI client, and you have to specify the URI 
that is your endpoint and the authentication key. So now the question from where I can get this endpoint and the authentication key. So endpoint is nothing but this. Okay, this is the this is the base URL. So you are supposed to specify only the base URL. Okay, remaining thing it will automatically fill. So you need to specify the uh, base URL that is endpoint and the authentication key. I showed you in the portal. In the portal, you can see the key and endpoint here. Under the resource management, you can see the key one on key two, and there is an endpoint. See. So this is you. This is what you are supposed to provide in the constructor here. And then you will be making a request like this. Chat completions options. Chat completion options equal to new chat completion options. And you have to provide a list of messages. See, this is a list of message. This is the first message, which is the system message. Look at that chat role dot system. So the first message is system message. And this is the system message. And this is the second message which is a user message. Okay. Examples are not provided in this one. Okay, if you include examples, you can add a more messages here, but here only the uh, system message and the actual prompt is given. Along with this messages, you can also configure the maximum number of tokens to use the temperature to configure and uh, which model to execute. OK, so that is the name of the deployment. So temperature is used to specify the creativity of the model. Okay, The value is typically between 0 and 1. 0 means no creativity. It always gives a static kind of answer. But 1 or near to 1 means creative answers. So every time when you ask, it will be providing some creative answers okay some dynamic answers means the answer will be same but the way it is constructing the statement will be different and then you can make a request like a chat completions equal uh, response equal to client dot get chat completions and then this object and you will get the response here and how to get the response response dot choices of zero dot message dot content. Okay. And that completion message we can print. Same can be done using Python. So Python and the C sharp are the two languages used in this exam. Okay. So if you are planning to attend the exam, you must have a basic understanding of either Python or C sharp because the, if there is a code based exam means they will give us some sample code and then ask you to write the missing line of the code. So in that cases, they will use only two languages, C sharp or Python. JavaScript or Java will not be used in the exam, but you can build applications, but in the exam, they will use only two languages, either. Either Python or the C sharp. And here you can see in Python also we do the same process. We import the OpenAI from the Azure OpenAI namespace or package, then create a client by specifying the endpoint key and the API version. Then we, we can make a request like a chat, or oh sorry, client dot chat dot completions dot create. Means we are making a chat completion request. Specify the deployment name, temperature, max tokens, and the list of messages. So this is our system message, and this is our user prompt. And the result which is generated can be accessed using this 
response dot choices of zero dot message dot content. So that's it in the second module. So in second module, we have learned about how we can make request to the GPT models and how we can consume them using C sharp and uh, Python. So there are labs associated with that, but labs you can see in GitHub. Okay, you can search uh, for AI 050 labs in GitHub and they will provide some step by step instructions for completing the labs that you can uh, try uh, if you have an Azure OpenAI subscription. So that's the end of the second module and we will take a small break, but before that, let me check. Is there any questions? OK, I can see there are a lot of questions. OK, so there is uh, one question about a RAG approach. So RAG, I will explain at the in the last module, RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. We'll talk about that in the last module. And what can we use to create synthetic data? So you can use any natural language models like uh, or this even if was if you want the data to be an image data, okay, test data, synthetic data, you can use this Gen AI models to generate it. So now the developers and testers are creating the uh, test data or synthetic data by using Gen AI models. You can tell the model, can you provide a uh, one one thousand records of uh, employee data? or 1000 records of student data. So it will be able to generate such kind of uh, data, tested data can be generated using Gen AI. So Open AI's subscription, I have mentioned, if you have an Azure account, you will not get the Open AI along with that so open ai is available only if you make a explicit request okay that means if you create an azure account you will not get the open ai for that you need to fill an application form and submit to microsoft and they will analyze that and approve if it is valid but make sure that you are if your account is a private account like created using the Gmail, Hotmail kind of email IDs, it will not get approved. Okay, so it will be approved only if it is an organization account, means it should be uh, an email, okay, that is, or it should be an Azure account associated with your organization's email ID. The personal email IDs like Hotmail, Gmail, all these will not work. Once the uh, OpenAI is enabled, you will get a mail from the Microsoft. So one after that, you can start creating your open air resources. So embeddings I have already mentioned, it is mostly used in the RAG approach, that is retrieval augmented generation, where we want to use custom data as a grounding content to the model. So grounding content, what is it? We'll discuss later. OK, I'll show you that with examples in the coming uh, module. So whenever we want to use RAG, we have to provide our data in the form of vector data. So how we will create the vector data? We have the text data in our hand which needs to be converted into vector data. For that, 
we use the embeddings model. Can we use two models in one app? Obviously, yes, you can use any number of models in uh, a single app, not a problem. Okay, so you create a model and not using that model. No, it won't get charged because the cost will be calculated based on the number of tokens consumed. Okay, difference between GPT-4 mini and GPT-4. So GPT-4 turbo is the initial GPT-4 model introduced after GPT-3.5. It was a multi-model model, model which with, with the 128K token context size. But the problem was it is a uh, little slow because of the heavy context size and uh, memory. And uh, it is... Uh, it's a cost is also was very high. That means for 1 million requests, it was charging almost a $30 or something. So people were not interested to use that because compared to the GPT 3.5, which is just a $0.5 uh, for 1 million request, this is $30 we have to pay for 1 million record, uh, 1 million tokens. Okay. So that difference you can see. So people were not interested to use GPT-4. So they have uh, uh, introduced a new low-cost model that is GPT-4.0. But GPT-4.0 is again heavy context size and uh, uh, compared to GPT-4 it is better. But for lightweight application, for example, if I want to build a simple chat application where I don't need a very complex operations, so I can use the GPT-4 uh, O model, but it's a lightweight version I can use. That's why they have introduced a GPT-4 mini. So if you go to the OpenAI models catalog, So here you can see the difference. Uh, one minute. The pricing also you can see. If you look at this difference, here you can see GPT. 3.5 turbo it's the cost is for input means for the input it is 0 .0, 0 0.50 that means not even one dollar for 1 million tokens and for outputs that is 1.50 for 1 million tokens that means for 1 million input and 1 million output if you consider total two dollar will be consumed okay for 1 million 1 million if you use in case of 3.5 model. But look at that GPT-4 uh, turbo model. What is the cost? Look at that GPT-4, it is $30. Look at the cost difference for input from 0 0.50, it is directly jumped into $30, okay? And this GPT-4 32K model is $60. Okay, for 1 million tokens and uh, for output it is $60 for GPT-4 and uh, $120 for uh, uh, output. So this, since this is very costly, but the benefit is this is multi-model model which can work with the images also. Okay, not image generation, image it can understand and you can ask questions about the images. So people were not interested because this is also very slow compared to GPT 3.5. So they have introduced a uh, new one that is GPT 4 Turbo, but it's still you can see the difference. This is $10 for 1 million token, and this is $30 for 1 million tokens. 
So with the same features they have introduced which one? GPT 4O. If you look at this GPT 4O, this is $5 for uh, input tokens, that is 1 million tokens and the 2.50 for the input tokens. You can see, okay, uh, in case of batch API. So for uh, output, it is $15. So input is 5 and output is 15. Okay. But when you come to GPT 4O mini, this is the cost is again reduced. This is cost is 0 0.150. For that is 0 0.15, which is not even one dollar for one million, and the output 0 0.60 for one million. Okay, but you can see GPT 4O Mini is our most cost efficient small model that's smarter and cheaper than GPT 3.5 Turbo that has vision capability. So it is also having vision capability. It has 128K context size and the knowledge is up to October 2023. So that means it is providing all the new features, but it's a cost is very, very low because this is a small sized model, which is uh, better for small scale applications, like a simple, if I want to do a simple chatbot, I can use this one. But if you go with this one, this is the advanced multi-model compared to the GPT-4 Turbo. Okay, means because GPT-4 Turbo was very costly, they have introduced this as a cheap model. So people can directly use this one instead of GPT-4 Turbo, which will have full capabilities. All features, functionalities, everything will be available. But for lightweight applications, I can go for the GPT 4O Mini. Okay, so that is a difference. So uh, 3.5 is not providing the vision capability, but GPT 4 is providing vision capability. But 4O is cheaper than uh, GPT 4 Turbo. Okay, and uh, GPT 4O Mini is very, very cheaper compared to GPT 3.5, GPT 4O. GPT-4 uh, Turbo every model, but it is a lightweight model. What are the available methods for data ingestion for making deployment ready model? So you can consume your models by making the API calls using the SDK or REST API. REST API is a common approach, but SDK is also used. So in the beginning, I have explained the, uh, explained the difference between open AI and the Azure open AI where Azure OpenAI provide the features like a selected region deployment, means you can deploy in your selected locations and also integration with the networks. So you can connect to the OpenAI resources using a private network because you, you can deploy within the private network. And also it provides monitoring to uh, the, the OpenAI resources. So you can use Gen AI in various domains, but uh, how you train the data, because these models are pre-trained uh, models, which does not have knowledge about each and every aspect of uh, a particular domain, for example, healthcare or education, or maybe uh, uh, some uh, hospital or something, or some domain when you consider, it don't have 100% knowledge about that particular domain. If you want the model to understand work efficiently with all kinds of queries, 
then you have to fine tune the model means you have to customize the model okay for customizing there are two options fine tuning and rig that we will discuss in the last module can we deploy model to local and own server so open ai models are not deployable but there are some other models available like uh, meta meta's llama model is deployable in uh, local server or google's gemma model is available the gemma is 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 there and uh, microsoft 53 is available so these models you can download and run from your local machine also okay so now let's take a small break of 10 minutes and then we will continue okay are they licensed yeah so no uh, the meta models uh, the the llama 3 you can use directly without any license even google's gemma also you can use if you want i'll show it uh, after the break in my local machine i am running them you can download and use it without any licensing issues okay so let's uh, take a 10 minutes break and we will continue after the break so this is a max 10 to 15 minutes break so let's go for the break
Hello, everyone. I hope all are back. We will continue. Okay, so let's uh, continue to the next module. So in this module, we are going to understand the prompt engineering techniques that we can apply on generative AI models. So what is prompt engineering? And how we can use prompt engineering to build effective prompt? This is what we are going to understand here. A prompt is an important part of generative AI because according to the prompt that we are giving to the model, it is generating the responses. If you are giving a prompt which is very simple and not explanatory, model will not be able to understand the requirement correctly. So, Creating an effective prompt is very, very important in generative AI techniques. So what is the important of, importance of prompt engineering is we have to maximize the relevancy and accuracy of the completion. So completion means the response, the output which is generated by the gen AI models. So we have to increase the relevancy and accuracy of these results. And also we can specify some styles and formats for our output. So the output has to come in a table format or a list format or some other format that we can specify in the uh, prompt engineering uh, method. And also we can provide a conversational context. Suppose if we are expecting the answers to come from a specific topic, which is not known by the model, we can tell the model, okay, this is my context or this is my uh, information and I'm going to ask you some questions on this and now you have to give the answers based on that. Okay, so this will help the model to mitigate bias and improve fairness because how we are uh, uh, giving the effective prompts, the model will able to generate the re relevant answers. Okay, so this will help us to mitigate bias and improve the fairness in the responses. So we have already seen in uh, Gen AI or in Open AI, we have two types of endpoints we can use to generate the completions or generate the responses. One is the completion endpoint, another one is chat completion endpoint. In the completion endpoint, we will just provide a prompt. But in the chat completion endpoint, we will be providing the prompt in the form of an array of messages. But in these two cases, we can include the context informations as well as the behavior of the AI assistant. But the way we are configuring that is different. Look at that in the first completions API, that is the older approach, which is used in GPT 3.5 Turbo and earlier versions. We were using the uh, prompt itself for configuring the behavior. You can see in the prompt we are specifying you are a professional events planner. That means we are setting the behavior of the 
model and then we are saying write an invitation for a party to celebrate the lunch uh, launch of a new product so we are planning to create a invitation for uh, maybe the customers or uh, people so to invite them for the launch of a new product okay so as a events planner we want to we want the model to create a, a good uh, invitation so we are telling that model needs to act like a professional events planner okay so that is the system message you can say and the actual requirement also we we are giving in the prompt itself but when the same operation we do with the help of chat completions api we will be giving that that in the uh, system message as you can see we include the system message to set the behavior of our uh, assistant and then what is the user requirement or user question that you can put as the user prompt okay so there are different techniques we can use for creating effective prompts one is providing clear instructions so if you ask the model to do some operation it is always a better approach to provide uh, clear and specific information means the more detailed information so that the model is able to understand very clearly about your requirement and accordingly it will it will be able to generate the answers okay see look at the difference between the two prompts in the left side we are providing a very simple prompt like a write a product description for a new water bottle so because my company is planning to create a uh, or produce water bottle okay and i want a product description so look at that when i give this simple prompt it is creating a product description but it does not contain all the features of that product what are the general features of a water bottle that is only included here but if you see the right side i am still asking the model to create a product description only but i am also explaining some features about the product so i am telling the model to include these features as points inside the product description see write a product description for a new water bottle that is 100% recycle be sure to include that it comes in natural colors with no dyes and each purchase removes 10 pounds of plastic from our oceans so that means when the product description is created i want to include some important points like this is 100% recycle and there is no colors or no dyes used in the Uh, manufacturing of this product okay so these points we have to include now look at that the uh, the the product description which is created by that prompt is giving more uh, features or more relevant answer compared to the previous one okay so an example we'll see suppose if i i i can show that in the chat gpt a uh, very simple this is just to show the use of that here so here i want to add a prompt just a message just a minute
Okay, sorry, let's continue. Suppose my intention is to create a set of 10 questions for my upcoming session. For example, I am planning to conduct a session on uh, maybe Angular. Okay, Angular is a JavaScript framework for building the front end. So I am going to conduct a batch. Okay, uh, maybe next week. So I want to conduct an assessment for them. And these members are uh, laterals, means experienced people who already working in Angular. They are already know Angular fundamental concepts. Okay, so what I am going to teach is the advanced concepts of Angular. Okay, so and I want to conduct an assessment, maybe post assessment for that. So for the post assessment, I want to create some questions. So instead of I create the questions manually, I can tell the chat GPT to generate the answers. See what is the difference comes. If I ask chat GPT, okay, create 10 MCQ questions uh, on Angular. So very simple prompt for Angular. This is the very simple prompt. You can see it is creating the questions. So it will generate the 10 questions. Very simple prompt. But you can see, uh, I don't know how many of you are aware about Angular, but I can see the questions which is generated. That is the response which is coming is containing the MCQ question, but these questions are very basic level of questions. Look at that, what is Angular? Or what is the feature of Angular? That kind of very basic level of question. But look at that, I have already told you, I'm going to conduct the batch for an experienced people who are already aware about Angular. Then for them, why have to ask a question like what is Angular or what is the feature of Angular? Because these people are already experienced people. So I want to conduct some advanced topic session. So the questions need to be from the advanced topic. But look at that. These questions are very basic level of questions. So what is the purpose of Angular CLI? Okay, so that kind of very basic level of questions coming. So this prompt is satisfying or it is generating the response, but the problem is it is not 100% relevant for my requirement because according to my requirement, I am expecting some advanced topic questions. So what I can do, I can modify this prompt and give a clear instruction saying that, so create 10 MCQ questions on Angular advanced uh, topics such as uh, uh, maybe schematics or libraries, library project and uh, observables, root guard, interceptors, maybe HTTP module, okay, and uh, uh, ng bootstrap. So that kind of topics list I am specifying. Okay. Now, if I generate, you can see it is going to generate questions based on that topics. It's not simple questions. You can see questions from that advanced topics like Angular library, Angular schematics, observables, or root guards. And that means advanced topic questions only generated. So 10 questions it will generate. But still, I'm not satisfied. If you want, you can group this into easy question, medium level question, and difficult question. Means I can give uh, more explanation like a group questions as three or maybe, yeah, three easy questions, four medium level questions and uh, three hard questions. So now again, I'm giving more clarity how to generate this one. So if you see, it is going to generate the easy questions first. There will be three easy questions. 
then four medium level questions and then three difficult level of questions. So look at that. The way it is generating the answers. When I gave the very simple prompt, it was giving the answer. But is it relevant? No. Because I am conducting an advanced session and why I have to ask for a simple basic level of question. So I have given more explanation, means more clarity for my prompt. And I have clearly mentioned what need to include or how the questions need to be formatted. Everything I have specified inside the prompt. So now this is 100% relevant because this is containing all advanced topics that is also grouped into easy, medium and the difficult levels. So that is what we are saying. Instead of giving very simple prompt, we can give some explanations or the prompt we can give in a detailed format so that the model is able to understand your requirement very clearly and generate the answer. So this is what the first technique you have to understand. That is providing clear and specific instructions. Now, to continue with this, or to understanding the prompt engineering more in detail, you also need to understand what is primary content or primary prompt, supporting prompt, and the grounding content. Okay, so look at that. There can be section markers, which can be either three hyphens or three hashes, which is used to separate different sections of your prompt. Okay, so there will be a primary prompt and secondary prompt. To separate them, we can give a uh, three hyphen or three hash. And there can be a grounding content or there can be examples. So accordingly, we can separate these sections using the section markers. Okay, so what is section marker? It is used to separate the uh, different elements within the prompt. Suppose if there is a primary content and the grounding content, I can separate them using the three hyphens. And what is primary content? The primary content is the primary information that we provide on which we have to actually process. For example, I am saying summarize this text. So which text we have to summarize? If my instruction is to summarize, but without that content, it will not work. For example, I'm telling, okay, summarize the text, but which text? Without that text, it will not work, right? So we have to say our instruction is summarize the following text. But what is the primary content, which is mandatory text, that detailed instruction, or I'm saying translate the below text. And if I'm not giving the below text, it will not work. Right. So that text is very important and that is the primary information we are supposed to provide. For example, if I go here, maybe I can if translate the below text into German. And this is the instruction. So instruction I am separating with the, the primary content. This is a, a session demonstrating the use of Azure Open AI. So this is a text. Okay. So I'm just copying this. So this is my primary content and this is the instruction. There is an actual prompt. So if I use this here in chat GPT, see, this is what the output which is generated. Okay. That's a German text. So without this, if I'm giving only this, will it work to so translate the below text into German? So where is the text? So without that text, it will not work. So which is the mandatory information that you can say as a primary content. Okay. Next is supporting content. 
for giving more clarity and specificity, we can provide that. So you saw in my previous example, I have given something like a create 10 questions on Angular. Okay. This is this will create 10 questions from Angular, but I want to provide some supporting information. So this prompt will work without the next sentence also. If I give this till I will get the answer, no problem. But if I'm providing some additional supporting information like uh, you can uh, use the topics such as schematics or uh, HTTP or routing or uh, components, etc. Okay. See, now I am providing some more extra information so that the model will understand the things in detail. So the, ben the difference between the previous and this is, this is the instruction. So instruction is already there. Only the instruction if I'm giving, still it works. Okay, but why I'm giving this only to support the model that, okay, you can use this, this the information to generate the questions, right? So this is what supporting content because without that also it works, but if you give this, it will give it more clarity in the answer, okay? See, it is generating the questions based on this. Okay. That is a supporting content. So, which is not mandatory, but if you provide, it will be more easy for the model to understand how to do or what to do. Okay. <clears throat> Now, next is grounding content. So grounding content means usually the model is uh, generating the answers based on the pre-trained knowledge. Okay, but if I ask some information about a specific company or specific product or specific uh, uh, data, it cannot answer. For example, Synergetics is a training company. Okay. I'm going to ask what is the uh, uh, hierarchy or organization's hierarchy in uh, uh, or management hierarchy in synergetics. So let's see what it, it is going to answer. Explain the management hierarchy of synergetics India private. Limited. So, who is the manager? Who is uh, coming under the manager? All these I am expecting. That means I am expecting the management hierarchies. I am just asking this question. So, let's see whether the model is able to answer this or not. I am just opening a new one and that let's ask. See, this is a general answer. Okay. So, this company will have a board of directors, executive management, senior management, middle management. So this is just a general answer, but this is not my expectation. So my expectation, I want the name of the company owner. I want the uh, second level of managers names and what is their designations and who is the third level of manager. So all these informations I want in detail. Okay. So in that case, if I simply ask this question, it cannot answer. So I am providing some grounding content that Synergetics is a training company in or based on India uh, leading the industry from last uh, 30 plus years. Mr. Ajay and so is the CEO of the company and Ashwini
is the VP for technology. Who reports to Ajay. Mr. Om Prakash Pandey is the AVP delivery to the reports to Ashwini and he takes care of all delivery operations. Mr. Vijay is working as AVP sales who also who reports to uh, Mr. Ajay. Mr. Nabajyoti is working as AVP technology to reports to Ashwini okay. and then I can specify okay is working as Lindsay. Uh, who reports to Mr. Mahindra is working as assistant DevOps to reports to home products. So this is just a basic information. We can give a detailed information, but I am giving this information and then asking the same question to the model. Let's see how it's going to answer. See, it's now creating this. So, Mr. Ajay Khankoje is a CEO and a VP, Vice President is Ashni Sahani and who is the AVP delivery and who is AVP sales, who is AVP technology and assistant managers, who all are the assistant managers, who reports to whom. So, look at that. Now, it is able to create the complete management hierarchy, right? So, look at that. If I'm not providing the information about the company, it cannot generate the correct answer. It is simply give a general answer. But if I'm giving a grounding content, so I'm expecting the answer to be generated from this uh, content which I am providing. So the model is capable to understand that this is the grounding content and I am supposed to generate the answer based on this information. Look at that. It does not use its pre-trained memory. Instead of using or instead of generating the answers from the pre-trained memory, it is using the grounding content, right? So this is what we use in case of RIG approach also. Because model is usually generating the answers from the pre-trained memory. But instead of that, we are providing custom data. This is the custom data I am providing to the model. And then I'm asking the model, now you can answer the question or you can uh, generate the answers based on the given content. Okay, so since it is updated in the state, maybe I, I'll be able to ask the next question, uh, Mr. Who is reporting to whom? Okay, so you can see it's now able to answer the questions based on the grounding content I have provided, right? So I am asking the questions specific to my organization. But actually the model is not trained 
with that data. My organization data is not trained uh, to the uh, Gen AI model, right? But we are providing it as a grounding content so that the model is able to generate the answers based on that. That is grounding content. So I hope you are able to understand primary content supporting content and the grounding content. So primary content is mandatory when you give an instruction like uh, which text you have to summarize or which text you have to translate. So the text is mandatory. Supporting content means it is an optional, but if you provide that, it will give more clarity. Grounding content means whenever you want to provide the answers based on a custom data, that custom data you can provide as a grounding content. So your questions, answers will be generated based on that. Now queues. So queues provide a starting point on which the completion builds. That means I have already showed you uh, in uh, Visual Studio Code when I typed the starting two words in my function, it will generate the remaining code, right? So what is the starting point Accordingly, the model understand whether it is a function code or it may be a comment or it may be something else. The model is able to understand that. Suppose here you remember that I have started with the functions name and it is able to generate. But if it is a comment, still I'm giving only the initial few words or few letters. It is generate the remaining. For example, function. Uh, binary search. Okay. See, when I do this, it is generating the code. The first few words I'm giving and it is doing the completion. So the starting point I'm giving. Similarly, for the comments, here I'm saying this function is used to, can you see? I'm just few words I'm giving. The rest of the things it is understanding from the context and generating the remaining. So starting point we are providing and the remaining it is completed. OK, and the same example I have showed you in case of. The story generation in the completions here I have started with once upon a time there was a king and when I generate the remaining it. Completes that is the. Use. That means this is better for creating the program code like the functions or SQL queries. So the initial SQL statement you can provide the rest of the things it will automatically generate. So that kind of things will be very useful. Requesting output composition. So when the outputs are to be generated on a particular format, you can explain that in the prompt itself. You can say, I want to generate my result in a tabular format with the three columns. The first th two columns will be this and the third column is this one. And it has to display the data in this format like that. You can provide in a detailed format description or if it is in a list format. So I want the output to be dis displayed in a uh, bulleted list. And for each item, there should be uh, a sub a list of sub items and the sub items should, should come in a ordered number format. OK, so that way it will generate the answers. So you can specify the output format. So the output will be generated accordingly. Another important prompt engineering technique is using the system message because I have already showed you that uh, the benefit of using system message like if I am uh, asking the model uh, to provide an answer, uh, it will give a normal professional answer. But if I ask the model that, OK, you have to behave like a comedy character or a comedian and your answer should be funny. OK, so then it will answer the questions in, in a funny mode. OK, or you can 
ask the model that you have to behave like a teacher and then it will answer like a teacher. So that you can do in the chat completions or even in the normal, even chat GPT also you can test it. Here you can see I have configured this. You are an AI assistant that answers the questions in a funny way. OK, so that means it will give the answers in a funny way. Or you can change it to you can uh, you are an AI assistant that answers the questions like a teacher. OK, and then. I'm going to ask the same question, see how the teacher is going to answer this. The teacher is giving a explanation. The average distance from moon to earth is about this many kilometers. However, it is important to note that the distance can vary due to moon's uh, elliptical orbit around the earth. So that means teacher is giving a detailed answer, not like the previous funny answer. Like, so you can control the behavior of your model by using system message. OK, or you can give a here. You are a customer service assistant. Who answer the questions about the company, but do not disclose the company's uh, details or companies uh, uh, what terms and conditions or policies like that. OK, so that instruction. So how the model needs to behave that you can provide in the system message. So that is a good approach whenever you create the custom assistant AI assistant like a chatbots. So how the chatbot needs to behave that you can configure using the system message. Next is conversation history and a few short learning. See the model will be using some learning techniques like a, it's called a, a few shot learning or zero shot learning or one shot learning. So when you provide a prompt, if you are not providing any examples, it is called a zero shot learning, which means you are not giving any specific instructions to the model. So the model will simply provide the answer without any examples. But if you want, you can add some uh, examples how to answer as a conversation history. So you remember in the uh, chat endpoints I have showed or I have told you the first message is always a system message. Here this is the system message and the last message is actually the prompt, the actual prompt. We are expecting the answer for this one. But if you see in between, we are providing some additional conversations. You can see there are three conversations. The user is asking something, assistant is, an, assistant is answering. Again, the user is asking, assistant is answering. Again, the user is asking, the assistant is answering. So what is the advantage of including this example? So this is actually called the example says, the model will understand by looking the previous conversation. So this is called the conversation history. So by looking into the conversation history, the model will understand, OK, I am supposed to answer this way. I'll tell you an example or I'll show you an example of that. See here, I am setting the system message that you are an AI assistant that analyzes the sentiment of of the user feedback okay so what is the duty of the ai assistant it is supposed to analyze the sentiment of the user feedback okay so what is my intention is based on the feedback Based on the feedback, I am planning to 
uh, increase or decrease the rating for that product. Okay, so when the feedback is positive, I want to increase the rating, and when the feedback is negative, I want to decrease the uh, rating. So that is what I am expecting. See, I am going to give some prompt. For example, this product is awesome. I like it. So this is the first feedback. Let's see what is the result comes. So it is simply saying sentiment is positive. Okay. Next, this. Okay, I don't like the build quality. Not worth for money. So this is coming as negative. Okay. So next year, one more example I'll try. It's nice one. Go for it. This is the next feedback. It's again giving positive. So that means it is working correctly and it is able to analyze the sentiment. But what I'm expecting is the sentiment uh, result has to come as positive one or negative one because based on that result, I want to increase or decrease the rating count. Okay, the, if the if it is a positive one, rating will increment. If it is a negative one, the rating will decrement. But you can see whenever I give a prompt, that is whenever I give a feedback, it is just giving positive or negative. But my expected answer is a positive one or negative one. That is an expected answer. So what I can do is I can give some examples here. So here I'm adding an example. See, first example, I say this one is very nice. I like it. So this is the user's uh, prompt. And the assistant is supposed to give a positive one. That is one. Okay. I can give another example. So give the second example. Mm. Nothing good in it. Waste of money. So this is minus one. So if you want one more example, I can include like. Uh, I am not satisfied with it. Mm. Never not recommending this. Okay. So this is again minus one. If you want, you can include more examples. It's it's up to you. Okay. And then I will save the changes. Look at that. I'm telling the model you have to analyze the sentiment, but the sentiment result has to come like a positive one or negative one with examples I'm including. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the same questions. Okay, see. It's coming one. OK, that means it's a positive feedback or if I give a negative one. It's giving negative one. So now automatically based on the result, I can increase or decrease. I don't need to put an if condition. If the result is positive, then plus one or if the re result is negative, then a minus one that is not required directly what is the result coming i can directly add or decrease means increase or decrease based on the result right so this is the expected result because i am planning to create a rating system based on the uh, sentiment result uh, provided by the gen ai model so what is the importance of example example will help the model to generate the answers on a particular format 
so what was or what is the result format that with the examples you can provide okay so that example you can see it's like a conversation like user is asking this assistant is giving this user is asking this and assistant is giving this so this is the conversation history the conversation history contains the examples so from that examples the model is understanding how to answer right and chain of thought so you can ask the model to break down its a response and explain its a reasoning so in complex scenarios where uh, suppose when when the model is supposed to give an answer uh, maybe answer will be a single word or single sentence but how that answer is generated there may be multiple steps involved in that process okay so if you want the model to explain the complete steps or how that model comes to that conclusion that you can uh, generate as a chain of thoughts that means the step how the model has come came into that conclusion for example uh, some uh, reasoning questions you must have seen so uh, raju has five apples in his hand he went to the market and he bought another 10 apples then his mom oh sorry he met his friend and he gave two apples to him then he came back to home and his mother gave him another five apples and he gave three apples to his, to his sister and he ate two apples how many apples in his hand now how many apples are remaining in his hand so answer can be a very simple number maybe 10 10 or 12 or 15 what is a number but how that number has created or how that answer is generated so we can tell the model provide the step by step explanation like a apples in hands equal to 5 apples bought from market equal to 10 so 10 plus existing 5 equal to 15 then uh, he gave uh, two apples to friends. So 15 minus 2 equal to 13. Then uh, mother gave five more apples. Okay. Then 13 plus 5 equal to 18. Three apples gave to sister. So uh, 18 minus 3 equal to 15. He ate two apples. So 15 minus 2 equal to 13. So final answer is 13. So you can see that is a step by step calculation, right? So I'm just giving an example. So how that final answer 13 is created. So that step you can include. Okay. So here you can see an example. It's a complex uh, scenario. Uh, okay. So like a what sport is easiest to learn but hardest to master. That means which sport is easy to learn but harder to master. So it can simply answer like the cricket or football or rugby or maybe tennis. But the question is how you are saying that, how you are saying tennis is easy to learn and harder to master or how you are saying rugby is easy to learn and harder to master. So what is the criteria? Okay, how you came to that conclusion? So if you ask the model, model will give, simply give you a single word answer like a tennis, football kind of thing. But I want the detailed explanation how you came to that conclusion that tennis is the easiest one so step by step explanation you can get like a first what is mean by easy to learn and harder to master so what is the criteria for easy to learn means what is mean by easy to learn and what is mean by harder to master so for a sport to be considered easy to learn it should have a simple rules and a require minimal equipment for a sport to be considered hard to master it should require years of practice to perfect and a large variety of techniques and strategies so if it has simple rules and minimal requirements then we can say it is easy to learn but harder to master means it takes years of practice and variety of techniques and strategies to learn 
so that is the criteria okay now we can take different examples that fit in this criteria like a uh, tennis okay simple rules easy to pick up but requires years of practice golf basic swing mechanisms and easy to learn but perfect uh, perfecting them takes a li lifetime of practice like this each and every sport we will take and will uh, compare with this criteria or fit with this criteria and then we will evaluate each sport based on this criteria and come to a conclusion like a tennis and golf both require expensive equipment which could make them less accessible to beginners in terms of skill ceiling and the time required to master tennis and golf both have a high skill ceiling and require years of practice to perfect so we have filtered and came to uh, two sports like a tennis and golf and finally it is taking a decision like a based on the above criteria and evaluation i would say tennis is the sports that is easy to learn but hardest to master while it may require expensive equipment it is still accessible to many people the basic rules and techniques are easy to learn but mastering the different shots and strategies takes years of practice so that means why it is saying tennis is the easiest one instead of giving a simple answer step by step breakdown you can see okay so that is the chain of thought so for for larger complex scenarios you can ask the model to explain the answers in step by step how it has come to that conclusion okay so that is the chain of thought okay. so these are the different techniques we can use for effective prompt generations okay so these are some of the techniques not maybe the complete list of techniques but i hope you must have understood the basic concept what is prompt engineering and what are the different ways we can improve the results by you creating the effective prompt so that's the end of the third module so if you have any questions you can put here can we add example dynamically yes so when you do it using the application program you can create the examples as an array and that array you can add the new examples and while making the request put this array in the prompt so when you add a more examples to the array uh, while making the request the array examples the array of examples will be going along with the prompt so that's it in the module 3 and that's uh, i think we can take a break here any further questions before we move or we go for the break okay i think there is no so let's take a break for the lunch it's now 1 o'clock we will continue the session at 2 and we will continue with the remaining three modules let's go for the break we'll continue at 2 